Hello everyone, hope you're good, hope you're well. This video will be on exchange rates. So let's go. If you've ever had to travel from one country to another, ever had to do business between one country and another, ever had to buy goods and services from another country, you'd have had to exchange your local currency for the currency of the other country. For instance, if I'm in the UK and I want to travel to the US for holidays, then I would have to sell some British pounds and buy some American dollars. If I'm in the UK, if I'm going to travel to China for business, I would have to buy some yen. If I was going into Europe, I would have to buy some euros or whatever country I had to do business with. The exchange rate measures the value of one currency in terms of another. So the value at which we exchange and hence the word exchange rate, one currency for another. Now there are many different exchange rates. We can have the pound against the dollar, the pound against the yen, or the pound against the euro, and on and on. Now the nominal exchange rate is defined as the number of units of the domestic currency that can purchase a unit of a given foreign currency. Say the number of units of British pounds that can purchase a unit of American dollars, for instance. Okay. The real exchange rate, however, adjusts the nominal exchange rate for relative prices. That's inflation, right? In different countries. So I'm not just talking about the rate at which I exchange my pounds for dollars. I need to adjust for inflation, for relative prices in America, okay? And that would give me my real exchange rate. Now, you might hear this about once in a while. We talk about currency depreciation and currency appreciation. Currency depreciation is the loss of value of a country's currency with respect to one or more reference currencies, typically in a floating exchange rate system. Now, we'll talk later about what a floating exchange rate system means, all right? But when your currency loses value, we call that currency depreciation, okay? On the other hand, the good stuff, what we want is if your country gains value. So currency appreciation in the same context is an increase in the value of the currency. Now what determines the demand and hence the external value of a currency? So if there's more demand for a currency, the external value of that currency will rise, right? So you demand for certain things and hence because there's a lot of demand for it, the value of that thing will rise and this is what happens to currency. So what determines the demand and the external value of a currency. I'm in the UK, so I will be talking about this in the context of the UK. So demand and external value of the British currency, the pound, will depend on certain factors such as the demand for UK goods and services from abroad. To buy UK products, overseas buyers will need pounds. So these overseas buyers will need to give up their own currency and change it into pounds. If demand for UK products increase, then all other things unchanged, the demand for pounds will increase as well. Because these households, these firms, these individuals will need to have British pounds to buy our UK goods and services. So this will increase the value of the British pound. Next, we have UK interest rates. If UK interest rates are higher than interest rates elsewhere in the world, then all other things unchanged, the demand for pounds will rise. Overseas investors will look to buy pounds to save in UK banks and earn higher returns. So these attractive UK interest rates will attract what is called hot money, hot money, right? flowing into the economy, flowing into the country. So this would increase the demand and external value of the British pound. 
Next, we have relative inflation rates. Now, we all know inflation is bad. So, if UK goods and services are relatively expensive, then this is likely to reduce demand for the products and therefore for the pounds. So, because there's higher inflation, then it will make the British pound unattractive. It will make British goods unattractive. It will make British services unattractive. And this will decrease the demand and external value of the British pound. Next, we have expectations. So the expected economic situation in the future. If currency speculators, speculators believe that the pound will rise in value in the future, then they may buy now so that their investment will become worth more. So this will increase demand in itself and the external value of a currency. So if people expect things in the UK to get better, people expect the British pound to get better, then they will buy more of it. And hence the demand and external value of the British pound will rise. Now that we've talked about the demand and external value of a currency, let's talk about what determines the supply of a currency. So the supply of a currency depends on factors such as the demand for foreign goods and services. I'm in the UK, so this will be the demand for foreign goods and services by UK households and businesses. If UK consumers and UK businesses want to buy more US goods, for example, or goods from any countries, say China, okay, then they will have to sell their local currency, in this case pounds, to buy the currency that they need. So for instance, US dollars or Chinese yen. And so the supply of pounds to the currency market will increase. In other words, if the demand for foreign goods and services by UK holds, households and businesses increases, then UK households and services will need to supply more British pounds to the market to buy whatever good they want to buy from the other country. And so more British pounds will be sold to the currency market so that we will have to buy those goods and services from uh, the other countries. So there will be more supply of our currency, of the British pound, to the currency market. How about interest rates overseas? This relates to if it's more attractive to save abroad. If UK households, UK firms, UK businesses feel it is more attractive to save abroad because of better interest rates, then they will supply more of the local currency, more of the British pounds to the currency market. Next, we have speculation. This will relate to what we think will happen regarding the economic situation in any country that we are talking about. If we think things are going to get better in America, in Europe, in China, wherever you are, right, then more people will be willing to buy that currency, okay? So more people will be willing to sell where they think uh, things are going to get worse. So if they think a certain country's currency uh, will depreciate because things are going to get worse in that country, they will sell more of that country's currency, supply more of that country's currency to buy more of the country's currency where they think things are going to get better. It might be beneficial for us to define what the balance of payments is. Now, the balance of payments is a statement of all transactions made between entities in one country and the rest of the world over a defined period of time, such as a quarter or a year. Usually, we measure this in a year, so yearly. Now, why is this important? You can tell right off the bat that balance of payments will have something to do something very crucial to do with the exchange rates all right so wherever you go you're very likely to buy goods from all over the world clothes from china wine from france oranges from spain uh goods and services from uk uh american movies jet engines right um in the uk we export lots of things 
films, music, education, our technology. All right. Now, what does this mean? It means we have to balance our imports and our exports. So are we importing more than we're exporting, for instance, or are we exporting more than we're importing? If we're exporting more and the value of our exports is more, OK, the value, not just the quantity, the value is more then we have a positive balance of trade. OK, uh, if if we if, if we're importing uh, uh, more then we have a negative balance of payments. Right. OK, so what we usually want to do is to have a positive balance of payments. And you can tell that the exchange rate will make this happen. If we have a good exchange rate, so the value of our currency is higher, then our balance of payments is more likely to be positive because we can factor this into the value of the goods and services we sell. All right. Now, let's talk about what happens to the demand for our currency in the currency market given different price elasticities. So here we'll be talking about the demand for pound sterling in the currency market given different price elasticities. So this will be price elasticity and the demand for our currency. In this case, we're in the UK, so we'll be talking about the British pounds. Okay. So what you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, is that the more price elastic demand is for UK products abroad, the greater the fall in quantity of pounds demanded, giving an increase in the value of the pound. What do we mean? Let's say we have two uh, demand curves for UK goods and services abroad. So let's have uh, this demand curve here demand curve D1 and we can see uh, demand curve D1 is very price elastic. You can see it's very horizontal, right? And then we have demand curve D0 here, which is more price inelastic. So you can see it's very vertical. On this axis, we have the external value of the pound. So here is our exchange rate. And here we have quantity of pounds being demanded. Now, let's have an appreciation of the pound. So the value of the pound increases from ER1 to ER2. We have this relationship here. Now, let's see what happens to the demand for British pounds, the quantity of British pounds as a result. OK, now when you have for our inelastic curve that was D naught and we have and appreciation here what we have is you just have a slight decrease in quantity being asked for you have a slight decrease in quantity of pounds being demanded for in the market but when we have a good that is very price elastic here we have like d1 what do we have we have a big reduction in the quantity of pounds or your local currency being asked for. This only makes sense, right? People are more responsive to price changes in the case of the one that is more price elastic. So they respond more, okay? So there's an appreciation of the currency and you can see that they're looking for less of that product. They're demanding for less of that product, demanding for less of the pound. OK, so that's a very interesting relationship with your uh, curve that was more inelastic. We have an appreciation of the currency, but you have just a slight reduction in the quantity response. Next, we can talk about how we get to equilibrium in the currency market. All right. So the graph below shows how we are moving to equilibrium in the currency market. All right. So here we have on the vertical axis, once again, the external value of our pound. And here we have quantity of pounds. All right. OK. Right. Now, here we have our demand for pounds and you can see our demand curve as we usually have in economics. It's downward sloping. Right. And then here we have our supply of pounds. And as usual, our supply curve is upward sloping. All right. 
Now here, you know, equilibrium or equilibrium, if you want to call it like that, is where you have your quantity supplied equal to your quantity demand and is right here at ER1. What do we have above the equilibrium? We have what we call excess supply. For instance, what we have at E3 over here, right? We have excess supply. Now, what will happen is that the exchange rate will have to fall till we get to equilibrium, okay? So the exchange rate will fall till we get to ER1. Uh, on the other hand, at ER2, okay, below our equilibrium, there is excess demand. Why? Because our exchange rate is too low. So the exchange rate will have to rise once again all the way to equilibrium because more people will be demanding for our currency than we have. And that is how we get to equilibrium in the currency market. So what's the effect of an increase in the demand for a currency? Well, an increase in demand for a currency can increase the exchange rate and the quantity of the currency. This can lead to an increase in the value of the currency, what we call appreciation of the exchange rate. So it becomes a strong currency. This is what we want, right? We want more people to increase their demand for our currency so that our currency appreciates in value and becomes an even stronger currency than it already is. If once again we have the external value of the pound, our exchange rate on our vertical axis, we have the quantity of the pound on our horizontal axis. If this was our uh, demand for the pound previously, and this was our supply of the pound, and we have an increase in demand, so more people want the pound and are asking for the pound, then we will have this relationship that we have over here, right? So our demand curve is going to shift to the right, and we are going to have an appreciation of our exchange rate, okay? And that's what we have there, and also an increase in the quantity of our currency and we become a stronger currency because our exchange rate has appreciated on the other hand what is the effect of a decrease in the demand for a currency well this is what we don't want a decrease in demand for a currency can decrease the exchange rate and the quantity of the currency and this can lead to a decrease in the value of the currency other words in other words a depreciation of the exchange rate so it becomes a weak currency this can also be from oversupply so if you supply too much of your currency this is what can happen once again say we have our demand for the currency our previous demand d1 and then we had our supply for the currency if supply uh, stays the same but less people want the currency so this is our new demand you can see our demand has fallen and our exchange rate will also fall from ER1 to ER2 and then you can see we have less of it uh, being demanded for the quantity drops the exchange rate drops and then we become uh, a weaker currency which is what we don't want right okay so you want your currency to appreciate normally and not depreciate so that has implications for the supply of a currency. So what is the effect of a decrease in the supply of a currency? Well, this is very similar to what happens if you decrease the supply of any good or service. If you decrease the supply of any good or service, you make it scarcer. And when something becomes scarcer, it becomes more valuable, right? As long as it's a good commodity, it's a good that we want, unlike pollution, right? We don't want pollution. If you decrease your supply of pollution, that's fine. But if you decrease your supply of any good or service, right, normally that will make it scarcer and the uh, value will go up. Therefore, a decrease in supply of a currency can increase the exchange rate and decrease the quantity of the currency. So it's 
just what happens with any good or service. If we have 10 iPhones in the world, we reduce our supply of iPhones from 10 to say three. Of course, because we have less iPhones, it's scarcer and more valuable, right? So we have an appreciation in, 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 in the value of the iPhones. And this is what will happen. We'll have an appreciation in the value of our currency. Okay, so let's have that here. We have our demand for the currency. We have our previous supply of the currency, our uh, S pound one, and then we reduce our supply of the currency. We move left to what we have here, S pound two. And of course, you can see as a result of that, our exchange rate appreciates. OK, so the external value of the pound, the exchange rate appreciates and our quantity of the pound reduces from Q1 to Q2. But crucially, we have an appreciation of the pound the external value of the pound the exchange rate increases conversely we can have the opposite effect if we increase the supply of a currency so what is the effect of an increase in the supply of a currency well also an increase in supply of a currency can decrease the exchange rate and increase the quantity of the currency so this is what we don't want right this would lead to a depreciation okay once again we have a graph showing the external value of the pound the exchange rate and we have the quantity of pounds on the uh, horizontal axis right and then we have this situation where we have our demand for the pounds right and we have our supply of the pounds in the previous uh, period s pound one now what we have done is we have increased our supply of the pound to s pound two and what do we have we have because demand has stayed the same and we have increased supply so we have a depreciation of the external value of the pound which is the exchange rate which we have here on our vertical axis so our exchange rate drops from er1 to er2 while our quantity increases from q1 to q2 but crucially we have had a depreciation of the pound so the effect of an increase in supply of a currency would have the effect of causing an, uh, a depreciation of the value of that currency so what do governments usually do well governments can intervene to buy their own currency so government intervention to buy its own currency can make your currency scarcer so what will happen if the British government decides to to buy British pounds if the UK government decides to buy more of its currency well the government is effectively making pounds scarcer but buying them with other currency so buying them with the other currency from the other country so say your your US dollar your yen your euros your naira or you name it so it will make the other currency more available less scarce and then make the British pound scarcer so here again, we have a graph where we have the external value of the pound, the exchange rate. We have our quantity of pounds here on the, on the horizontal axis. OK, we have our supply of, of, of pounds. Right. And then the government does something uh, to the demand. So we had our demand here. Right. And then the government uh, makes pounds scarcer. So demands for more pounds. So the government buys its own pounds demands for its own pounds by selling the other currency what will happen is because we've had an increase in demand for pounds from d1 to d2 is our exchange rate is going to rise from er1 to er2 and then the value of our own currency the value of the pounds will increase so government intervention to increase demand for currency and increases external value the government buys pounds to increase demand using foreign reserves and this causes an appreciation of the british pounds conversely the government could intervene to sell its own currency so government intervention could be to sell its own currency and what will happen will be the government is effectively making pounds in this case less scarce and more available by selling them and buying another currency 
So it will make the other currency scarcer and reduce the value of the British pound. So once again, if we have a graph here on the vertical axis showing the external value of the pound, the exchange rate, on the horizontal axis showing the quantity of pounds, and we had the situation where this was the demand uh, for pounds, okay, and this was the supply of pounds, all right, and then the government makes uh, pounds less scarce by selling them okay so the government supplies more pounds to the market sells them and buys another currency this would shift our supply of pounds curve because there's more to the right to s pound two and what will that do that will increase our quantity of pounds in the market from q1 to q2 and crucially it will reduce our exchange rate it would depre depreciate our exchange rate from er1 to er2 so we'll have the depreciation of the currency okay and 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 this is what we have over here now that we've defined the exchange rate uh we've looked at how the government can manipulate its exchange rate and we've seen what that does to the value of the exchange rate in terms of appreciation and depreciation now we can talk about the types of exchange rate systems all right let's start with your fixed exchange rate system this is an exchange rate system where one currency is fixed in value against another usually against the us dollar so you usually see countries fixing uh, the value of their currency against the American dollar or against the British pound. It involves the government working to keep the parity, their intervention on the currency markets. Of course, these kind of exchange rate systems give certainty but can cost vast sums of foreign exchange from national reserves because the government will always have to buy and sell currency to keep the value fixed. Next, we have your floating exchange rate systems. This is an exchange rate which accepts that market forces will determine rates based on how they view the country's trade performance and its economic and political stability. So under this kind of exchange rate system, the market forces of demand and supply for the country's currency will determine the value of that country's currency. These systems cost less to maintain but can result in vast swings and changes in currency values because people will be speculating, right, based on the forces of demand and supply. This can seriously affect trade performance and confidence. And then finally, we have your managed or debty floats, okay? In this case, this is where the rate is floating but between upper and lower limits that the domestic government keeps it to. So the government might say it shouldn't uh, go above this value or below this value. It brings more stability but a less cost to the national reserves. So how does the government usually intervene in the currency market of a fixed exchange rate system? Well, the government can intervene in the currency market by buying or selling its own currency, by changing the interest rate, or by using reflationary or deflationary policies to affect the level of demand in the economy and therefore the demand for imports. Also, the government can have what we call revaluation or devaluation of the currency. So increasing the value of the currency or reducing the value of the currency respectively. Now, what are the advantages of fixed exchange rate systems? First, certainty, all right? With a fixed exchange rate, firms will always know the exchange rate, and this makes trade and investment less risky because we know what the exchange rate is now and we can predict what it will be in the future. Also, we have the absence of speculation. With a fixed exchange rate, there will be no speculation if people believe that the rate will stay fixed with no revaluation or devaluation. Also, um, we also have constraints on government policy. If the exchange rate is fixed, 
then the government may be unable to pursue extreme or irresponsible macroeconomic policies as these would cause a run on the foreign exchange reserves and this would be unsustainable in the medium term. So the government will not be able to do things or even propose things that are unrealistic. There are some disadvantages of fixed exchange rates. So what are these? Well, the economy may be unable to respond to shocks. So a fixed exchange rate means that there may be no mechanism for the government to respond rapidly to balance of payments crisis. Next, you have problems with reserves. Fixed exchange rate systems require large foreign exchange reserves and there can be international liquidity problems as a result. Next, you have speculation. If foreign exchange markets believe that there may be a revaluation or devaluation, then there may be a run of speculation. So people think the value of the currency is going to go up or go down. They might want to buy or sell to help them make some profit. All right. And fighting this may cost the government significantly in terms of their foreign exchange reserves. So the government will have to have its foreign exchange to back this up, right? Next, you have policy conflicts. The fixed exchange rate may not be compatible with other economic targets for growth, inflation and unemployment, and this may cause conflicts of priorities. This is especially true if the exchange rate is fixed at a level that is either too high or too low. Right. So the government will have to say uh, revaluate or buy or sell currency in order to meet its other economic targets. And this would be incompatible with a fixed exchange rate system. All right. Now that we've talked about the fixed exchange rate system, its advantages and disadvantages, let's talk about the advantages of a floating exchange rate system. Like we said, this is a kind of exchange rate system where you leave the market forces of demand and supply to determine the value of the currency, to determine the exchange rate of the currency. So what are the advantages of floating exchange rate system? Well, they include the value of the currency will adjust to reflect change in market conditions automatically. So this is what we want, right? This is a free market kind of system which adjusts automatically to meet and reflect changing market conditions. Also, the fall in value of the currency should eventually restore equilibrium so that the supply of and demand for the currency will be equal, which is what we want. And crucially, there are no costs for intervention. The government doesn't need to buy its own currency or sell its own currency, and the government doesn't need to hold excess foreign reserves to do so. However, what are the disadvantages of a floating exchange rate system? Well, first of all, the value of the currency will change regularly, literally every minute, making it difficult for firms to plan ahead. All right. And this unpredictability of the value of the currency is likely to deter investment. So it may lead to resources being invested in other countries where the exchange rate is more stable. Once again, we might have speculation. So people will speculate, but not from the government this time. They might just buy the currency now, thinking in the future, the market forces of demand and supply uh, would uh, make the value of the currency more dearer. So people will want the currency more in the future. So buy now and then sell later. And once again, you have speculation with my call. The exchange rate may not be able to adjust to equilibrium. All right. So maybe for some reason, you just have too much demand for the currency. All right. So you never actually get to equilibrium. OK, so maybe you produce goods and services that are wanted by the market so much that you never actually get to equilibrium. All right, these are your class activities for the week, ladies and gentlemen. Your first one says, how can a country improve its exchange rate? 
The second one says what determines the external value of a currency. And the third one asks what are floating, flexible and managed exchange rates. So do these and we will see you in class. Have a good week.